Hello everyone, and welcome to part 3 of how to make a point and click game in Unity. Last time, we made it so our object can jump from a random x coordinate, and that way we can shoot it once at when we start implementing the actual game aspects. And now I'd like to focus on making the movement a bit more interesting. Because right now it's pretty predictable. It always jumps up at the same velocity, reaches the same exact height, and it just won't make for a fun game if it was that predictable. What I'm going to do is use another random uh, random value. The thing about this one is that it will control a velocity it for when it jumps from the bottom of the screen. And the what I want this value to be depends on the minimum height I want it to go to and the maximum. I'm thinking of going 9 comma 16. And in order to test, I'm going to change this value with the Y velocity. Now let's go into Unity and see how well that worked. So now it should be, okay, that was way too high. That was better. That's still going a little too high. Let's try 14. Now if I were to click play, it shouldn't be going nearly that high. That's good. Alright. Uh-huh. Okay. And now, I want another value that will control its X movement. That way it has a bit of an arch. So float X velocity once again, a random range. Now these values would be dependent on how fast do we want it to move in the X component. Which is going to need a bit of experimentation. I'm going to see what negative 4 comma 4 yields. So, okay. That one's a good. But they are jumping a little low. I am a little worried of it, like, yeah, what it did just there, where it jumps and you only have it for a second. So what I'm going to need to do is make it so after it defines your X position, it defines your X velocity based on how close you are to the left or right position of the screen. The way I'm going to do that is another if statement. So if x position is greater than, let's say, let's make negative 7, the furthest you can go to the left before you can no longer go to the right. We're going to say set our x velocity to a random dot range of negative 1 because we don't want it to always go right if it jumps out of that point. And let's make it much bigger, like 6. And then, once again, if x position is less than 7, x velocity is a random range of, uh, this time I want the minimum to be negative 6, comma, 1. And now, let's see how well that affects it. It's definitely jumping to the right a lot. I'm wondering if I made a mistake. Okay, that time it was up and down. Yeah, I must have made a mistake somewhere. 
Okay, I'm going to try making these values smaller. So I can only move to the right if it's greater than negative 5, but I can still move to the left if it's less than 5. Actually, because what I want to have happen, I need to think about this. So what I want to have happen is to make it so it has to move right when it's over here, but it moves left when it's over here. Understand? Oh yeah, that was my only issue. Having too big of... What I need to do is just make these smaller values. So now it should be a bit more interesting with its movement patterns. Okay, that wasn't supposed to happen. Neither was that. I must have it backwards. Yeah, I think that's exactly what happened. I had these values backwards. So now they should always be jumping away from the edge of the screen, or at least most of the time. That one was straight up. Okay, that's looking better. So now what I want to do is make our object spin. Similar to the um, velocity, we get a component from the rigid body 2D that is called torque. Add torque. And what this is looking for is the amount of torque. And for those who don't know, torque is its a force that causes an object to rotate. So I'm going to just input a constant value just to show what it does. Now the code is going to compile. And as you can see, it's spinning very slightly. But I want its rotational velocity to change at random. In fact, I'm wondering if I can just rotation. No. Yeah, I think I have to use torque. So I'm going to need a much bigger value because this is only activating whenever your position is less than negative 6 in the y-axis. Now, you will see that it starts to spin a bit more as it keeps doing that. But the thing about add torque is that we're not getting the control that I want. So another thing I can do is dot transform dot position dot no transform dot Euler angles dot z and I can set it to plus equals some amount and as I said before tr when I act when I um, use the transform unity will neglect physics I made a small mistake I need to set Euler angles to a new vector 2 actually a vector 3 because we need to modify the Z component. So we're going to use 0, 0, and then whatever Euler angle value we want to modify. So now if I were to click play, okay. Oh, I see my issue. When we do it like this, we're modifying Unlike velocity, we can't just change it once and then expect it to spin the rest of the way through. What we're going to need to do is run it in the update function elsewhere. So that will be what we do the next episode. We make our object rotate in, a, in an interesting way, and we may even get into how to move the crosshair with your mouse key. Yeah, this thing is your crosshair. So that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.